Hey guys, Hugh Shang here. Welcome to another guide. Today we're going to be looking at a replay example of the build I covered yesterday, Zest's 4 Gate Robo uh, Glaived Adept build. And boy, do I have a replay for you guys. So, I was struggling to find a replay here. I had to play a bunch of cannon rushers and dirty cheesers, and they were taking all my ladder points. Um, but then we queued up against Golden, and so here we go. Let's uh, start it up. By the end of this replay, you guys should have a pretty decent idea of how this build plays out. Um, this is just one example, so there's many avenues the game can take. But here we go against one of the stronger players on an A. 6.2k, I think. And he's been playing a lot, so he's, he's getting pretty strong. Previous pro gamer, of course. So here our depth goes out. We did scout the third base here, I'll show you. So we know he's playing uh, a macro game. Let's actually jump to my vision here. So here we are. We're going to scout into the main, just make sure he's not cheesing us. We do have a pretty decent idea with the third base, but um, it doesn't hurt to, to double check. I allow the shade to finish. Sometimes you can sneak in over here and, um, and pick off a drone or two, but Golden was pretty on point there. So we just shade out. Honestly, that was a little sketchy. I think uh, some better players might have caught my depth there, so I want to be careful. Let's grab that Glaives. Again, if you want to follow the build, just go check out the, the guy from earlier. Today we'll just be talking about my thought process and, uh, and what's going on in the game. Throwing down my gates. Adept comes back. Definitely not cheesing us, so we can just go through the build like normal. Cut the probes at about 12. And then soon enough, I can warp in two more adepts, put four in the war prism, and uh, and go to do the harass. Also got the stalker in the wall. I think this is the best choice, just in case they do some sort of bailing bust. That can help quite a bit. Setting up our third base. This build's still pretty new to me, so I was putting these in the war prism. I actually think it's maybe better if you just run them over here um, and make sure there's no lings blocking your third base. And then you can kind of deny vision as well, so it's a little more ambiguous what you're doing. Here we go with the warp in. We still don't really know what he's doing, what his uh, defense is, so we'll have to figure that out before we decide if we want to warp in more than eight here. He's got a lot of queens. In retrospect, this is probably not the best thing to do, go for the queens. They take quite a bit to kill, and he got almost two adepts there, I think. So I probably won't do that in the future. But it looks like he's playing mostly Ling, not Roach. So I warp in four more Adepts. And then we'll see if I let this one finish. I think it would be okay to let that one finish. But um, I decided, you know what, let's just go for four more Adepts. Um, he has so many Lings anyways. But he jumps on me. And I think this is a pretty good trade for me. It's gonna harass me a little bit in the back. Things are getting crazy. So I try to hold the ramp here so I get a little bit of a better surface area. And then those guys got separated from the pack. Let me just slow down here. These guys got separated, so I decided, okay, I'll uh, I'll try to throw these guys in somewhere else, let these guys trade out. This build's getting pretty uh, pretty insane, pretty fast. So I'm trying to make it work, but obviously this isn't uh, super clean anymore. So we target down a few workers. At this point, I'm thinking, ah, it's going okay, but not great. Um, looking at the workers tab, it actually seems like I had a pretty solid position here. And since he didn't have roaches, I actually think if I could have grouped these adepts together, maybe done like one more warp in, I'm pretty sure he would have just died like immediately. Because um, you, you really need roaches to hold this. So probably could have done this a lot better and just maybe won the game here, but... That's okay. So we got a transition. I warped in some more adepts thinking that he was only making links and I wanted to continue the pressure, but I didn't realize that the warp prism was dead. So it's a bit of an awkward situation where I might have to walk across the map with the adepts. So not, not the best again. 
There's going to be a lot of not the best moments <laughs> in this replay. That's kind of just how ladder goes. Obviously, I showed the build in uh, a sandbox setting, so everything goes perfect. But here we are in a real game. Things are getting crazy. So we're shading across the map. Again, we would have liked to do this with a war prism, but it's it's okay. Uh, it can still work. We've been a couple of depths at home. I'm kind of worried at this point that he's gonna go do some crazy all in because of how many depths I've been making. And I'm not starting immortals in this position because I haven't seen any roaches just yet. He's just been making zerglings, so mutas are on my mind right here. I bring those adepts from the third over in a second because I thought he was going to counterattack, but he didn't. So we can bring those over now. We don't need them over there anymore. Doing some more drone kills. Looks like we're still up in workers, so it's it's going okay. Certainly not like a huge lead because he has army supply in um, in exchange. So normally when Protoss is up workers like this, it's it's very good. But in this situation, it's not as good. Some Chrono Boost. I see these Roaches. I think I saw them a bit earlier, actually. So we have started Immortals. We've got a plus one going on. And here I'm just trying to get rid of these at this point. I forced the Roaches that I wanted. And now I just want to trade them out. This was a really nice scout. And, and really fortunate, actually, that we saw uh, that Spire. Because otherwise, I think I, I get wrecked. I'm not super used to the build, so I haven't uh, I haven't been scouting super actively with these sentries and stuff. So I think we would have just got uh, killed as soon as the muse arrived. <laughs> so fortunate for us. Going into blink now, getting a couple of cannons set up, just kind of setting up for uh, for these mutalisk. And I also stopped the immortal production. They're going to be pretty good against the roaches, but I think. In this game, I was thinking he just made maybe eight or so. So we don't really need those anymore. Maybe we'll add on more later if he keeps making roaches. But for now, uh, we should be good. Since I'm not making any immortals, I'm going to need ten gates instead of eight. So I'm going to add on a couple more. Getting plus two. Trying to figure out if he's all enemy right now or if he's playing more of a macro game. So the way I do that is I look for the fourth base. And I just kind of see how many drones are over there. There, I caught a glimpse of the Mutalisk. If you see one Mutalisk flying in any direction, then it's like a 99% chance that all of the Mutalisk are flying in that direction. So I warped in a bunch of Stalker over there. If he does come over to this side, I have um, a lot of shield battery that I had for the earlier potential all-in. So we should be good over here, even if he jumps on us. Okay, so now I feel like I'm pretty safe against these Mutalisk. And so my plan is to get a War Prism, start putting on some pressure, and mostly with the idea of forcing Zerg to make some units that are not Mutalisk, because if you just sit back with Stalker and they're allowed to just make Mutalisk constantly, they, they will eventually have too many. Um, so if you want to sit back, you don't want to be playing this Stalker style. You want to be playing something more akin to like double Stargate Phoenix. So because I'm playing Stalker like this, I gotta attack. But I want to attack anyways. Don't tell anyone. Here we are, getting a couple Lings, a couple Roaches. It's looking pretty good. Now here, this is probably one of the bigger mistakes in the game, is I didn't leave a group of Stalkers there. Or I didn't have a shield battery to help out. Um, so... It gets awkward pretty quick. I get supply blocked, um, and ideally I would be able to warp in like eight stalker and just defend this, no problem. And then he would have to come back, but but I screwed up, <laughs> so he's gonna kill these cannons. And yeah, this is not as great anymore for me, so I'm kind of under pressure here. But we pull the probes, and I just kind of solidify over here. It's only 10 Mutalisk, so I'm thinking if I warp in like 8 Stalker plus the Cannon, I can probably defend and then um, and then retake my uh, my Mineral Line back in a second. If it was more Mutalisk, if it was like 20 or something, then I would probably just YOLO base trade and put down a bunch of Cannons over here. 
and just let my whole main and natural die and just leave uh, leave the space. But fortunately, it's not too many since I pressured uh, earlier a little bit. And here's where it gets tricky to make the right moves because there's so many variables. Like he can go to different bases, he go to any of my bases, he could uh, bring all his Ling Bane over here, or just so many things could happen. So I'm I'm trying to figure out if he's bringing the Mutalisk across, or if he's committing to the base trade, right? Um, and so right here I see the Mutalisk leaving, fortunately we lose the War Prism, but, um, but that's okay. And so we, we send our Stalkers across, or at least we were going to send our Stalkers across. But since the Mutalisk are kind of blocking the path, I decide to wait for one more warp in and then group up. Here we're kind of pushing. Again, I, I don't know where the Mutalisk are, so I decide I'll back up here so that I'm closer to this group of units. Maybe we can meet like somewhere over here. But he kind of sees what's up, so he engages me here. And let's just say I have some cold hands, so the micro is not amazing. But we do get some nice force fields over here. I think I tried to blink these, but my potato hands didn't uh, do what I wanted them to. But it works out good enough. I think we had a little bit of a lead here, so it's not, not too bad. Our reinforcements come in. And so here I'm thinking, okay, we got this game in the bag. We've already killed a base. He didn't really kill my main. I've got quite a few units. Um, but I've been here a couple times before <laughs> and I've thrown these games because my army is only stalker like I didn't keep any zealots or archons and the problem right here is that if zerg makes a crazy amount of zerglings they can fight this army with their muta, um, muta zergling and you can easily throw the game so instead of pushing forward here I back up for just a second to warp in like one more archon and a couple more zealots it seems kind of small, but, but like I said, I've, I've thrown like probably 20 plus games here over the years. So you got to be careful. Moving back. Again, we got this uh, Archon. Looks like two Archons, four Zealots. Maybe I build a War Prism as well. That's another good reason to back up if you lose your War Prism. You don't want to have to be rallying from your, your fourth or something like that. Here we catch a Mutalisk. Not bad. I thought maybe he would just continue on that uh, side, but he backs up. So I warped in some stalkers here in case he did come this way. But he didn't after all, so these guys just walk across. And then I'm feeling like we can take an engagement now with this Archon Zealot. And I'm assuming he made a ton of links. Okay, so <clears throat> this looks like I'm map hacking, but let me explain. <laughs> Nobody report me, please. So right here, I'm moving in and I I know he can see me, right? Like he's got the creep spread. So when I warped in here and I moved down, I saw a flash of Mita here. And I was thinking, okay, he knows where I am. He's probably gonna skirt around here and try to snipe the war prism. So right now, actually I think I just saw the overseer there as well. So that was helpful. So I blink over here. So we defend our war prism. And he's going to try that a couple times, so I'm just going to continue uh, blinking my whole army over here. I think it's it's fine to not have the blink in the battle because I want my Archons on this side anyways and the Zealots on this side. So if I can blink over and reposition and try to target some Mutalisk, I think it's a win-win. So I blink over, he was thinking, nice, it'll, this will be a sweet engagement, I'll just run in, snipe the War Prism and have a good fight. But as soon as I blinked, he realized that my Archons were basically in perfect position. So he uh, disengages, but that was that was a couple Mutalisk kills and a bunch of Zerglings, so yeah, this game, oh, got an alarm. <laughs> Sorry about that. And yeah, I think this game's in the bag at this point, so I'm just really worried about throwing. This was the only uh, replay I could find today, <laughs> or the only Zerg that let me do the build, so I was, uh, I was a little worried I would lose this one, but um... So I'm spreading, I'm microing really hard, doing my best, bring some zealots over here to put pressure on him, and then kind of, like, the idea is to force him to come into me, but he doesn't fall for it, he, uh, initiates 
kind of a weak base trade to be honest. This is a little desperate, but um, not a bad idea. And so I uh, attack into him. And then the situation changes a little bit. He's actually bringing all of his Zergans over here. So I decide, okay, we'll do a recall. But it can get sketchy pretty quick if you just... Like, if you just recall Stalkers here, he can probably just trade with me. So, I had to make sure I recalled the right units. So, I think I moved Command here in a sec. And I tried to get the Archons close together so I could recall them. So, I recall the three Archons and a bunch of Stalker. I think it was a pretty good split. So, he immediately disengages. Which, which I was kind of expecting, but this does put me in a tough position. Because now my army is totally split up and he can maybe fight one of the halves. So, actually this is another place where I've lost a, a crazy amount of games. So what we do here is we try to find the best choke point we can. And since I'm close to this ramp, I just decided I'll come up here, hole position the ramp, and then maybe warp in a couple of units and then he can't really fight me anymore. But I did mess up a little bit. There's actually a gap here. <laughs> So, stupid me didn't actually uh, choke off the choke point. Amazing. Warping in some Archons. And, yikes, the Lings slipped through. But fortunately, it wasn't that close of a game, so it ends up being somewhat okay. This is obviously a fight we're not gonna win, but he really traded poorly up the ramp, so. In the end, uh, this was a big win for us. Obviously, behind this, we have, you know, a bunch more army that we recalled earlier. So, this is pretty much game. I think he GG's as soon as he sees this. And, yeah. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this cast. If you did come to the end of the video, it would help me a ton if you guys could subscribe, like the video, and um, leave me a comment uh, what video you would like next. All right. I will see you in the next one.